you know, I'm going to use La Russell as an example. So let's say La Russell's making a hundred thousand a month. If a label comes along, and this is actually a true story, if a label comes along and offers him two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and he can make that in two and a half months, but they want him to sign for five years for that advance, it's crazy. He'd be insane to do that deal. Yeah, you know. So if a label sees what he's doing and they want to be in business with him, they're going to have to step up their offer and they're going to have to come a little more correct. And the great thing about coming more correct is the more money somebody has to put into working with him, the bigger the risk on their part. And if they take enough of a risk, they're not going to lose. They're going to make sure that he wins. And that's the value in having a partner that's all in and committed Mm -hmm. because they're going to make sure it's kind of like if I borrowed 20 bucks from you and I didn't pay you back, you'd probably never lend me money again, but it probably wouldn't change your life if you lost 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. But if you invested $3 million in me and weren't making your money back and I couldn't pay you back, I bet you'd figure out ways for us to make money so you could get your damn money back. That's the value of leverage. If you're all in, you're going to figure out a way to make your money back. You're not going to give up very easily. You're going to say, okay, that didn't work. Let's try this. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try this. You're going to keep plugging away until you get your money back. If you have a little bit of money in and the artist doesn't pop immediately, you might say, next. So for me, I like the deals that are a little bit bigger and a little bit more highly leveraged because I think they have a better shot of winning. And that's why I always did bigger deals. Yeah. That's funny that you say that. It reminds me of, you know, as controversial as he may be, uh, Grant Cardone. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. I remember he said when he, (laughs) the recession happened and he realized you know, that he didn't owe the bank enough. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Said, oh, I only owe them a few million dollars or whatever. Look at Trump. And now they're coming at me, trying to hit me. But yes. if I owe them a billion dollars, they would be trying to be like, they hey, would be like, hey, we have this opportunity for yeah, you. Why don't you come and partner with this? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, that's the exact same concept. It is. It's, it's, it's interesting, but it does make all the sense. It in makes the world. all the sense in the but, world. Um, when you look at the artists that I've helped, they've all been in the top five or the top 10 Mm. of success. And that's why, Mm. because they were always in a position, first of all, where they could do it themselves. We put out music independently so they know how to do it. They don't wait for the label to feed them. They go and feed themselves. Right. But they are also so highly leveraged in these deals that the label's like, Oh, you're going to win. Oh, you're going into the top 10 because we're going to get our money back. Yeah. And I, I kind of like that. Yeah. On August 12th, myself, Sean, and J.R. McKee will be hosting a live event in Atlanta where we'll be sharing some of our best marketing, branding, and content strategies that we haven't really been able to put out anywhere else. So if you want a reason to come to Atlanta, or if you're in Atlanta, or if you just want to dap us up and see if we're real, go and get your tickets at nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. We're only doing 60 tickets, like a hard 60 tickets. So you want to make sure that you're one of those 60 Once again, nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description and we'll see you there. In most businesses and most economies, you, as you grow and get older, you become more successful. This is a business where you can be 18 or 21 or 24 and be a multi-fucking millionaire Mm -hmm. and run an empire. And it gets harder as you get older. Yes. Which is the- It's the opposite, right? 22 of it all. Yes. What, you mentioned- the deal earlier that artists make that can be very bad when you go to the major label and the major labels are looked at as the people who are the more valuable or the investor in general. Right. I understand. your. Or they were. I understand. Yeah. Right. I understand your argument. What do you say to the investor though, who says, Hey, I put my money into this situation. Yes. And I love money doesn't get made back the artist can walk away and I just don't get, I don't get my money. Cause it's well, not like they have to file for it, bankruptcy it, or it's anything It's true. Like that, it's right? true. The artist does get to walk away, but they've lost time. Yeah. And in the music industry, like your sweet spot, you've got like 18 to 24. And after that, you're kind of fucked in rap. So if, if you stay with a label from 18 to 24 and they're not doing the right things and they're not, they're not building your career. Now all of a sudden you're 27 and they let you go. Like you're, 
your prime years are gone. So yes, they lost money, but it's kind of easy to make money. You can't get time back. Mm-hmm. And this isn't, I don't mean to sit here and bash on the major labels because I actually like the major labels. I think that they have a purpose. And I think that once you have leverage and you're a priority inside of the label, I think they're awesome. I think some of the best people work for major labels. I think somebody like Drake and Rihanna would not be as successful as they are today had they stayed independent. So I don't want to just sit here and bash labels i'm really bashing the underlying concept and business model of signing 108 people and then two of them become successful that's what i'm bashing i'm bashing artists that don't do this on their own and learn how it works and then sign to a label and sit back and say okay wake me when i'm famous that's crazy to me Because you're probably going to have to keep working in order to get to a point where success starts to happen, the label notices, and then they get behind you and help help you get all the way. That's really more the scenario of success in the music business when you're signed to a label. 